What's up, Geminites? Gem Mint here. Today we're going to take a look at every Marvel event omnibus that has been released so far. This is going to be like a video checklist to go over everything from Acts of Vengeance to War of Kings. So stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, before we get started guys, hit the subscription button down below, make sure to hit that notification bell, and hit the like so you're made aware every time we drop new videos. These are going to be videos that you can go back and reference to if you're trying to collect these omnibus, or if you just want to know if one of your favorite events is collected in this format. Now if you're new to the channel and you're unsure of what an omnibus is, it is a hardcover book that collects an entire run of either a creative team or an entire storyline. That's why I prefer these types of comics, because it has the whole story in one oversized hardcover book. There's been a lot of Marvel events over the years, and we're going to take a look at each one of them that has been released in this format. Now, as of this recording, the War of the Realms Omnibus has not been released yet, so if you're watching this a year later and you're going to say, I missed it, that's why. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and jump into the library. All right, guys, the first omnibus we're going to talk about in the library is the Acts of Vengeance Omnibus. This comes with both an omnibus and a crossovers, which has other titles that tied into the main storyline during the 90s. So here are all of the issues that are collected in the Acts of Vengeance omnibus. This was a, an idea of villains taking on different heroes than they normally do. So for instance, Magneto's always wrestling with the X-Men, and this one he's going after Fantastic Four. Same with Doctor Doom. Instead of tackling the Fantastic Four, he goes after Spider-Man or whoever. So that was the whole idea of this premise that crossed over, as you can see, multiple titles here. The crossover book really just acted like a companion. It, it just had more stuff that loosely tied in to what was going on in that first omnibus. Alright, let's take a better look at these books. So I'm not just holding them in my hands here, right? So I've got the front here. And then we have the back of each book. That's where you can see all the covers, all the issues that are covered in each book here. These are old school omnibus, so this is how they all really used to look. Just black covers with the silver, um, silver logos on them. You know, I think that the dust jackets are wraparound covers, actually. Are they? Let's see. Pretty sure they were, were oh, not wrap around connecting. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the artwork for the Acts of Vengeance. I remember I had action figures for these guys from the vault. They were like the vault guards or whatever. This is actually the uh, first appearance of Cosmic Spider Man. I remember I had this book. It was like one of my first CGC books. Looks like Sal Buscema Spider Man. So yeah, basically in Acts of Vengeance, you ended up having this cabal of bad guys, which included Magneto, I think it was uh, Doctor Doom, we'll probably get um, a shot of the, the villains at the round table somewhere here, if I flip through, here goes Doctor Doom, anyway, you get the gist of it, that's like Eric Larson Spidey. I read these actually before I started the channel. Oh, this is a Psylocke. I think that double dips on the Chris Claremont, Jim Lee book. So yeah, I read these books before I started the channel, before I moved over here into the new house. I don't really recall it. I think this had some Inferno tie-ins as well. It was okay. I mean, nothing to write home about. The next one we're going to talk about is Annihilation. This was an awesome Marvel cosmic epic that focused around Nova and the Annihilation Wave. This was an awesome story. I would be surprised to see the MCU not adapt this to some kind of storyline and incorporate Thanos, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, this actually includes the Dan Abnett Guardians of the Galaxy, which was the new team that was introduced into the MCU. This event also had a sequel called Annihilation Conquest, which loosely uh, focused on Ultron, but mostly just continued the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy adventure. Annihilation was what we call a whale in this hobby because it was out of print, it was selling for a lot of money. Uh, then Marvel announced a reprint, which uh, devalued the first printing, and now you can get it for cheap. But I'm pretty sure Conquest has now become the whale out of these two, which is pretty funny. 
So this is definitely like Marvel's version of the Jeff Johns Green Lantern run. This is like the epitome of Marvel cosmic post-Infinity Gauntlet. I really put Guardians of the Galaxy on the map. I don't really remember as much of Conquest. This was another set of books that I read before I started the channel. So it's been a minute since I read them. But I definitely remember the Richard Rider stuff, the Nova Prime stuff, all the Nova Corps being uh, destroyed and him taking in all of the Nova the mastermind or the world mind in himself. Uh, the Annihilation Wave with Annihilus was amazing. Uh, this was definitely a great run. So on both of these, the artwork on the hardcover is exactly the same as the dust jacket, just like the Virgin versions. And just to flip through some of the artwork here. So you have a lot of these mini series, like this Drax mini series, uh, a lot of four issue mini series, which kind of establishes the new version of Drax as opposed to that 90s version which was just a mindless Thanos killing machine. But Annihilus was awesome as a big bad. You had a, a dope Super Scroll miniseries, a Ronin miniseries. Little Celestials and Galactus stuff. And then just to flip through the Conquest book again, so Looks like, oh yeah, some, what is that, Venom? I don't even remember that. Gamora, very different in the comics than in the movies. I think this has something to do with Nova's brother going to the Nova Corps behind his back or something like that. That kind of sounds familiar. Oh, then you had a lot of that Moon Dragon and Fala, whoever. Oh, what's his name again? Uh, he talks with the Russian accent. I forget. Yeah. Alright, the next omnibus on the list is the Atlantis Attacks Omnibus. This was an interesting book. It, it was a storyline that took place over multiple Marvel annual issues. And it has to deal with the Atlanteans going to war against the surface land. So you have Namor involved. And it's spread over multiple titles throughout the Marvel Universe at the time, as you can see here. All right, let's get a good look at it. I always did like the cover for this, and I like how they also changed the price on the top from like whatever it was, $4 to the cover price of the Omnibus, 75 bucks. Old school spine. Then you have all the issues on the back. Like I mentioned, all really in annuals. Again, another old school Marvel Omni. Got your table of contents. Got some Silver Surfer. Here goes Namor. Some Marvel Comics Presents issues as well. I've been meaning to read this one, man. I mean, I like 90s artwork. And it seemed like a pretty quick read to just run through the next one on the list is the earth x trilogy this is the three-part series that is an elseworlds futuristic look at the marvel universe this has awesome covers by alex ross but people don't really tend to like the story as much this one comes in two volumes the first one contains earth x and universe x and the second one contains paradise x so a three-part series covered over two omnibus all right, here's a better look at the Earth X Trilogy, Alpha and Omega Omnibus, Volumes 1 and Volume 2. Those are the Alex Ross covers there. And yeah, you have like Days of Future Past Wolverine. Um, what is that, Old School Sentry. You have like Giant Man Deathlock. What do we got over here? Thor, Cap. That's Spider, Spider Girl, Venom, Spider-Man or whatever. Awesome covers. So the Alpha has a wraparound cover here. You can see with the Alex Ross art. Uh, well, actually, they're both wraparound covers, but the Omega one is a sketch. But here's the thing. The artwork on the interior is not Alex Ross, and it's just okay. I hear it's kind of like a drag to read. I don't know, man. I have to really uh, find the time to read this one myself. 
But I always pictured it being like Kingdom Come version, but for Marvel, you know? Like, future... You know, heroes got older. Who goes Galactus? Yeah, the interiors don't really look too great. It looks, you know, it's a little, like a wide variety of artists. You got a Nihilus there with Blastar. Paradise X issue 4 with the Old Man Logan cover. So you get the idea. Moving over to the H's, we have Heroes Reborn. I recently did a review on this omnibus. This took place after the events of Onslaught, which is another event that we'll get to later on down the list here. But this was basically all those heroes coming back after being destroyed by Onslaught during that other event. So like I mentioned, I did a review on this one a while back, and I was surprised by it. I mean, it had good artwork. You had a lot of Jim Lee stuff. They had, they had Rob Liefeld stuff, uh, you know, including the Captain America picture that nobody likes. It was the wraparound cover. But they had a lot of great stuff, man. A great artwork with Fantastic Four, with Iron Man. The first issues were the Captain America issues. I like this era. This stuff like reminds me of when I was a kid. They really went heavy with the Thor Reborn stuff. There's like two full omnibus that collect that material. And I think there's another one solicited with this Reborn universe. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was a very cool uh, retelling, kind of reimagining of the Fantastic Four origins as well. They kind of crammed like the first 52 issues from the Silver Age into like a 12 issue series in the, two th uh, in the 90s. Oh man, I gotta sneak this one in. I knew there was another omnibus that was like a 90s event that took place over a number of annuals. The Evolutionary War with the High Evolutionary. So man, I, I missed this one on my original walkthrough. So it's just collected in what, nine annuals that collects this run. Isn't the High Evolutionary the one that was uh, responsible for Secret Wars as well? But, you know, I love I love me some Copper Age art, big panels. I like the artwork. Dialogue's a little bit heavy, but not too bad. You got some Scroll Silver Surfer action here. Oh, I forget what her name is. Anyway. Got some New Mutants stuff, Cannonball, the X-Men Annual. A lot of these annuals I read in other collected editions. But here, you know, they got the whole storyline all, all connecting. <laughs> Had to throw this one in. I almost missed it, guys. All right, this is a pretty big one. This is the Infinity Gauntlet. This was one of the first omnibus that I actually picked up, and it's a big reason why I collect this format. So if you look on the back here, you can see it includes the Infinity Gauntlet six-issue series, but it also includes everything leading up to it and everything that happened afterwards, including Thanos Quest, including the first appearance of the Infinity Gauntlet, and more. Right next to it, we have the Infinity War omnibus. So... It's kind of like a follow-up, but, you know, it's a different storyline. This one is the same thing. It has the main story. It has all the tie-ins that were included, spanning over the Marvel Universe during that time. And we just found out that there will be an Infinity Crusade omnibus that's going to follow up and kind of end that Infinity trilogy by Marvel. So I feel like they're only really connected with the Infinity title. But the Gauntlet's more about the Infinity Stones and Thanos with the Gauntlet, whereas Infinity War is more about... The evil doppelgangers and Adam Warlock and Magus and everything like that. But still, awesome Marvel events. Got the spines here. Gauntlet went with all the covers on the back, whereas Infinity War went with the wraparound dust jacket. So even though this is the first printing, it kind of has what Marvel's been doing lately. Like it's got the George Perez or a regular cover on the front. And the direct market, I think that's Ron Lim cover on the back. This is an essential omnibus. It has awesome stuff. I mean, that, that Silver Surfer run was amazing. Thanos Quest is amazing. 
Infinity Gauntlet 1 through 6, awesome. And then you have Aftermath issues as well. This has a reprint coming out September of this year, 2020, if you you know depending on when you're watching this video. So I definitely suggest you picking it up if you don't have it already. Infinity War with that nice wraparound cover. Kind of weird how they just left this space blank white up there, right? So Infinity War, you had all these evil versions of heroes. Here's Thanos' success when he's on his farm, which, you know, was even borrowed from the, in the Endgame movie. Here goes your, your doppelganger of Iron Man. The doppelganger of Spider-Man is the only one who really stuck around. He dies right in the first issue, Infinity War issue 1. All the Infinity War covers were wraparound covers, so it's cool to get those full images here like that. Here's another one. This one has pretty has pretty bad gutter loss, though. Look at that. Doppelganger back again. Well, Spider-Man. Here goes the, the doppelganger of Thing. I should read this one, man. I haven't read this stuff since the single issues. And I haven't read all the tie-ins, for sure. Like Wonder Man 15, I definitely never read that. You know, I guess we should include this Marvel Zombies Zomnibus. This was an event. Marvel Zombies first appeared in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four. And it basically went on a killing spree through all universes. Turned everybody into zombies that killed and ate each other. Had awesome homage covers on the back, as you can see here. And it was a crazy event. All right, let's take a look at the Marvel Zomnibus. Love this cover, the homage cover to Secret Wars 1. Then you see the back, it has all that stuff. Hulk 340, Amazing Fantasy 15, Avengers 4, X-Men 1 wraparound cover. There's a ton of stuff here. This is uh, X-Men 1, um, Amazing Spider-Man Annual, what is it, 21. First Iron Man, Tales of Suspense 39, Silver Surfer 4. Now my issue is messed up where all the pages came off the ribbon. I tried to glue it back, but it didn't really stick, man. I gotta try again one day. So yeah, I, I, if I recall what happened here, I read this whole omnibus back to back. This was also one of my first omnibus that I got. Reed Richards uh, from the Ultimate Universe accidentally messes shit up and creates the Marvel Zombies. And I know I said they go throughout the different um, universes, but I'm not really sure if they ever come to the 616. I don't think they do, now that I think about it. I'm sure at one point they do, or they try to. But, yeah, it's basically a Marvel Zombies storyline. The DC stuff kind of borrows, like, from what they did in this in this run. But it's pretty crazy stuff, like Spider-Man eats Mary Jane, like crazy shit. All right, so a lot of secret events going on here. First, we have Secret Invasion, which was the scroll story by Brian Michael Bendis. This one, I'm sure we're going to see adapted as some kind of story in the MCU, whether it's a big thing or just kind of one movie. But as you can see in the bottom, it's going to contain all of the other titles where this story kind of crossed over through stuff like New Avengers, Mighty Avengers, New Avengers Illuminati, and more. All right, here we go. Take a look at this Secret Invasion here. Who do you trust? Wrap around cover on the book, the scrolls as the Inhumans, as the X-Men, as the Avengers. You know, I mentioned them you know, adapting this story for the MCU. Although in Captain Marvel, they kind of made it so that the scrolls were the good guys. Unless, you know, just that group happened to be good guys. Dang. So I guess they could play that angle. A lot of variants and stuff in the back. See, Secret Warriors, I wouldn't consider an event. That was just a run. But Secret Wars, this is one of the earliest Marvel crossover events that had everyone from X-Men, Avengers, to Spider-Man, and more. This only contains the 12-issue series, and that's it. There were no tie-ins or anything for Secret Wars. It was just this classic run. Now, Secret Wars 2, on the other hand, they totally milked it. Secret Wars 2 was not an interesting story. It has to deal with the Beyonder, and it does take place over multiple titles, as well as its own series called Secret Wars 2. <clears throat> I remember being so happy when I found this one at my shop for cover price because it's like an out-of-print omnibus. 
And they also had the Alex Ross cover as the variant, but I always like to get the regular covers. Uh, this Secret Wars 2, man, was kind of terrible, to be honest. You had a clean 12-issue miniseries here, but it also includes, what, the store issue, a Hulk issue that's, like, way after the story, a what-if issue, two what-ifs. Uh, this one has all these, man, all these tie-ins. All right, very similar under the dust jacket. That's your table of contents. Spider-Man first time with that symbiote. Well... Origin of the symbiote, I guess. See, they kind of took this uh, and used it for Endgame. With Hulk lifting up, you know, underneath Avengers Mansion or whatever. Avengers Tower. Avengers HQ. It's funny, I remember, like, Doc Ock being a big villain in here. You know, the villains and the heroes were all fighting each other. Yeah, so they had that. Then they had this as the What If... Then this was like a later on what if. Secret Wars 2 with the Beyonder. Got some power pack tie-ins. Daredevil. Avengers. Here goes Fantastic Four. The binding's kind of jacked up on this. Look at this. What? Somebody didn't stretch that spine when they bought this. I'm going to go ahead and call Spider-Man's Clone Saga not so much an event, but more of a Spider-Man storyline. Same with the Ben Riley Saga. That really just had to deal with Spider-Man, so that's not really a Marvel event. Now, the War of Kings stuff is definitely an event. There's actually three omnibus that contain this entire saga. You have Road to the War of Kings, which is prelude stuff, the War King omnibus, and then Realm of Kings, which is the aftermath. This is basically an Inhumans vs. Mutants kind of story. Uh, you have cosmic characters here as well, and it takes place during the aftermath of Annihilation. So I read all these books as well after reading Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest. The biggest takeaway that I remember was uh, the Inhumans deciding to go to war, and then like Vulcan, the third Summers brother, who was like the real antagonist in this whole thing. Thanos comes back from the dead, and this one, but it's like that's all I really remember out of these three omnibus. My reading retention wasn't as good during the time when I read these. Yeah, so there was a huge double dip also with what's collected in here. I think the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy by Abnett and Lanning, that whole omnibus is collected over these three. So they all have these nifty wraparound covers. Here's a cool Guardians cover from the, um, from the Road to the War of Kings. And here's the wraparound from the War of Kings omnibus. And then Realm of Kings has a Silver Surfer with the Shi'ar stuff. Better Ray Bill. Kind of a lot to flip through for the artwork and all these three, so we'll just kind of flip through here a little bit. But you're going to have uh, a few different creators on this run. But yeah, you have Inhumans. And what's going on is something with Crystal, right? Because Crystal is involved with the mutants and the X-Men, I think with Quicksilver, right? Don't they have a kid together or something? So that's kind of what ties the Inhumans and Mutants together, but there's some kind of falling out that causes a war, which, you know, War of Kings. With X-Men, it kind of becomes like the Spider-Man thing. Are these really Marvel events, or are they just X-Men events? So uh, I'm actually reading this book now, which is why it's not in there. But we have the Dark Phoenix saga. I mean, it kind of is a Marvel event. It affects the Marvel Universe. So you have that, you have Age of Apocalypse with the Companion, uh, then you have X-Men vs. Apocalypse, the 12. These are also X-Men events, but I don't know, they, they seem to be more impactful than like what the Clone Saga was. And then we have X-Men Avengers Onslaught. Yeah, so with X-Men it gets a little muddy. Dark Phoenix Saga, Mutant Massacre, not really big Marvel events, more just like X-Men events. Yeah, like Dark Phoenix only takes place in X-Men titles, but... Mutant Massacre does kind of go to, you know, other mutant titles like X-Factor and New Mutants, but there's Thor stuff, Power Pack stuff, the Fantastic Four versus the X-Men, so, hmm, maybe Mutant Massacre is a little bit more of an event than Dark Phoenix. And then the same could kind of be said for Age of Apocalypse, the Companion Omnibus, which has, like, later stories from, you know, years later, 
uh, the the twelve stuff, which is kind of just a storyline that took place after Age of Apocalypse. So it's kind of more like honorable mentions. I mean, this one's in the title of the book. It's the X Men and the Avengers. It has huge stakes over the Marvel universe and where it leads to, like Heroes Reborn, like I talked about. So Heroes Reborn means that what people had to die. You had this big villain, which was like a mixture of Professor X and Magneto. So we'll end it off with Onslaught, which I remember being a big deal when it was coming out, but I don't think it was received as well as they would have hoped or what they thought. Gets a huge wraparound cover. I remember the Juggernaut stuff in the beginning where he's trying to... Uh, Go to Xavier Mansion. I think he ends up getting killed or something like that. I do like the artwork though. That big in your face kind of early 2000s artwork. Yeah, you got some Spider-Man tie-ins here. Again, that's the thing with these omnibus. You have all, all the tie-ins, the main story. You get the whole picture in these big collected editions. I know people are going to bring up stuff like Avengers vs. X-Men, but th this is not an omnibus. This is what is called an oversized hardcover, which is almost the same premise, same size book, but for whatever reason, Marvel just does not deem it an omnibus. All right, there you have it. I hope you guys found this video fun and informative. Let me know what your favorite Marvel event is in the comments below. What are some events that have not been collected in omnibus format that should be? Drop me a line. Again, hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Notification bell's on. And you guys stay minty fresh. Peace.